I think that we're not there yet. And in fact, we've had some tremendous advances and we have new tools for treatment. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we have, as some of my patients call it, uh, being stuck on third base. They're not able to get home, to use a baseball analogy. In other words, the drugs such as ibrutinib or the other agent, idilisip, that's used in combination with rituximab, these drugs typically cause partial responses. Um, and it's very unusual to clear entirely the leukemic cells from the blood or even particularly from the marrow. Patients may, over long-term therapy, achieve complete remission, but there's very, very few or very rare patients that have achieved the remission such that you cannot find evidence of the leukemic cells still present. There's also a concern that when you stop these medications, particularly when you're in the earlier treatment stages, uh, the disease may take off and patients may have a quick and fulminant relapse and have a clinical situation which requires aggressive management. So I think that uh, the idea that a patient has to continue taking these drugs forever is potentially not very attractive because of ones of cost. Also for younger patients who may be looking forward to uh, 20 or more years of therapy, this is not an attractive option. Uh, we have actually been looking at how we can try to incorporate uh, other ideas of the biology of the cell because these new therapies really have come about by our understanding of how the biology of CLL works. We are beginning to understand what makes this leukemia cell really tick, what makes it grow, what stimulates it, what keeps it alive. And based on that knowledge of the biology, you can now either use small molecules to inhibit some of the signals that the tumor cell has to receive in order to survive, or you can actually use antibodies that block critical receptors uh, that are important for leukemia cells to survive. Or in the case of the anti-CD20, use an antibody as a flag to target that cell for immune destruction. So I think it's very appropriate and important that we look at all these different modalities of treatment. I know we're very interested in investigating other survival pathways. We think that um, if you've seen the movie The Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the first one, where the Terminator is crushed and is immobilized, but then rewires its circuits and adapts to being crushed and is able to rise again, uh, sometimes this is what we're dealing with, with the tumor. The tumor is sometimes can adapt and maybe outsmart ourselves. And what I'm concerned about essentially is that the tumor may be able to either become resistant through genetic mutation or develop adaptive resistance and continue to persist. So we need to figure out what those alternative circuits are. And, and we are actively pursuing this by looking at newer antibodies. We have a very early clinical trial uh, using a new antibody that targets what we found to be another survival pathway for this leukemia uh, that's triggered by another protein called ROR1. I'm excited about these and other approaches which look at not just piling on with the same approach but coming in with different approaches so that we can outsmart this leukemia cell before it has a chance to adapt and outsmart us. That's where I think the future lies, so that we can actually render a treatment and be able to have, tell the patient, well, we'll give this course of treatment and be able to eradicate your disease. You'll be able to put it in the rearview mirror and go on with your life without having to worry about having your life shortened or impaired by chronic lymphocytic leukemia. That will be the day when we can really uncork the champagne.